Phoenix, always remembered as the scene of Nigel's huge crash last year. Paul Tracy took pole position for Penske, his first pole on an oval. Rookie Jacques Villeneuve was second quickest, ensuring the first ever all-Canadian front row in an IndyCar race. Nigel Mansell, third fastest. Satisfactory but disappointing after showing peerless form in testing earlier in the week at Phoenix. As usual throughout the season, Nigel didn't lack support, either in the grandstands or down in the pits. Team manager Jim McGee clocking his progress. Much the it's all right, we're real close. 20.51 and the poll is 20.42, so we're right there. In practice late Saturday afternoon, Nigel was lapping the circuit once more, attempting to discover where those precious fractions of seconds could be regained. Then suddenly he was spinning and heading for the wall, collecting Jacques Villeneuve along the way. first choice Lola would not be ready for the race. That meant preparing the spare car. I think I can say this now because it's, I'm not going to go on an oval again um, in the near foreseeable future, shall I say. I don't think you ever feel comfortable on an oval. I certainly don't. Uh, you go on an oval and you're committing yourself going into corners at 200 miles an hour. And you're going into the corners, committing yourself, whereby you brake very gingerly and you try and carry your speed as fast as you can around that corner. And you know if anything goes wrong, whether you have a tyre go down, you have a suspension problem, or you have a little bit of oversteer, or the car gets loose, as they say in America, you're going to have a monumental accident. So I think, no, I'd, I'd say you don't really feel comfortable. As they come down, they look nicely aligned here, 200 miles wide ahead as the green comes out. Paul Tracy sweeps across the front. Nigel Mansell comes up into the second row. Nigel moves into second place. Three wide as they come off of the corner. And you can see that Villeneuve, the lack of experience, he backed right off. But Bozell was one of those who got a superb start. Battle for fifth place as Robbie Gordon now closes on Mario Andretti. Mario, the Texaco car there. He has a red roll bar. Look at this. Nigel Mansell comes up and very quickly overhauls Paul Tracy. He has now won every race computed on a one-mile track. Let's see if he can do it with this win here today. Progress interrupted when Willie T. Ribs crashed at turn one on lap 28 of 200. Nigel pitted under the caution flags but stalled in the pit road. That delayed him considerably and first place became 12th. Meanwhile, the leading Penske's, Fittipaldi and Tracy, decided to stay out during the caution. And as the race resumed, they were in control, with Tracy running ahead of Fittipaldi. So at the top of the field, Paul Tracy, followed by Emerson Fittipaldi. Al Hunter Jr., the yellow has come out. We've got a car against the wall, and it looks to be... It's a Penske. Oh, oh no! no. Oh my goodness, how did that happen? The yellow had been out for some time. Jacques Villeneuve got high, coming through three, up into the grey, and absolutely rammed into one of those stationary cars. Here's how it starts. Teo Fabi, right there, touches wheels with Matt Schuster. That is an accident all by itself. Watch Tracy, now stop it right there. Can we stop it right there? Tracy tries to avoid it, and look, he's in the grey. Okay, if we let it run on, you'll see what happens then. Tracy is an innocent victim here. Now it's a three-car crash. As soon as it all stops, remember the gray is the no-grip area. The yellow flags are now out. The rest of the cars come around. And next down the line, Jack Villeneuve. Here's look at him go outside. Now look at this. Now watch the impact. Stop it right there. Can we stop it right there? Villeneuve has now no grip. He's in the gray. He's got dirt on his tires from the accident. He now knows there's a huge impact coming. Watch this violent impact. That is the scariest piece I have seen in IndyCar racing for many years. 
It is phenomenal that Jacques Villeneuve stepped out and walked away from that Reynard. Caution lifted. Nigel set about trying to pull back the lap lost in the pits with some audacious driving. Look at the debris, the mess. Winds are really blowing here and blowing debris onto the racetrack. Moselle high. Look at Mansell. Mansell comes low trying to unlap himself. Plenty of traffic there. Davy Jones to the inside. Jimmy Faster sits to the high side and Mansell is back on the lead lap. Brilliant move. A brilliant move pulled off by Mansell. And he did it by lining up correctly and anticipating the slow traffic on the way into turn one. Nothing like a three-rail billiard shot to get through traffic. But this will be Nigel Mansell's final stop. They've got the front tires off so far. They're not expecting any changes, but we'll keep an eye up on the front. Yes, Tom Wirtz is going just very slight wing change, only a quarter of a turn. Waiting for the last bit of fuel. Nigel's on the grab. Oh, boy, he has, wow. he has to kill it this time. 14-7. Yeah, there wasn't any question. He wasn't going to get that engine stalled again. Let both of the tires, and out he went. Oh, he's off the road. He's off the road. He's on the grass. Oh, 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 oh. Oh my goodness, oh, that's a hard stopper. He put himself behind the eight ball on that first pit stop when he stalled it. Now he almost does the exact opposite. And Andretti is in trouble. And we've got more trouble again. Debris on the track and it's caused some other problems. All right, this is what happened to Michael Andretti. Watch, listen. Accident is ahead. The loose wheel from Michael Andretti's car could have caused serious injury amongst the spectators. Miraculously, no one was badly hurt. But after such an incident-packed race, it was Emerson Fittipaldi who drove through it all to record the 21st victory of his IndyCar career. He finished 13 seconds ahead of Alan Sir Jr. with Nigel third. Points at Phoenix for Nigel, erasing the memories of last year. But what an escape for Hiro Matsushita. Of course, I was surprised, and, but and after I get out of the car, I saw my car, I thought I'm very lucky. Very lucky indeed, because the car split in two, the engine and gearbox went yeah. one way, you know, the chassis he, with you and it went the other. Yeah, you know, if he hit uh, maybe this much forward, I'm gone. Did you see him coming? Yes. What were you thinking? Scary, of course. Someone on every driver's side uh, was, was looking over them that day because you could have had two or three drivers killed at that accident. And um, where uh, Jacques Villeneuve hit Hero's car was right in the middle uh, between the engine and the bulkhead of the car, which just split the car clean in half. Twelve inches this way, it would have killed uh, Hero and probably would have injured very severely Jacques. And this way, 12 inches, Jack would have lost his legs because he would have hit the engine solid. And as it happened, when the engine spun off, poor Tracy was getting out of his Penske, and the gearbox and the engine flew past his body and just missed him. So, I mean, there you have a very good example of, now that is, you call it fate, you call it luck, whatever you want to call it, but believe me, that could have been a very tragic uh, accident whereby I think five or six cars were put out of the race by that accident and fortunately everybody could walk away and talk about it and that was incredible.